So hi and good morning everyone. Um, my name is uh, Roger Sora. I'm the PI of the BIAS project. And uh, <laughs> thank you. Um, so I'm very happy to be here today uh, with all the other projects. I think it's great that uh, we have all been brought together here to continue discussing this uh, issue. Uh, our project is called uh, BIAS, Mitigating Biases of AI in the Labor Market. And um, uh, that's the topic I want to dive into with this presentation. Uh, but I wanted to start with this little picture that you can see here behind me, um, because as uh, with many presentations, we often ask AI to help us, and I have asked AI to make me a normal workplace. Uh, and as you can see here, it's uh, about uh, the same person everywhere here. They, they have just been copy-pasted. And um, I think this is a good reminder for us to think that we cannot leave the future up to AI to decide, for example, what the normal workplace in the future should uh, be like. But I'll get back to this uh, picture later. Um, so the big question that we are investigating is when someone applies for a job, how can you make sure that the right, right person got the job? And also how can we ensure fair hiring processes? And here again, we see the word uh, fair showing up, which we have seen today is uh, quite a difficult uh, term, but uh, bear with me, we'll dive more into it. Uh, first, a little bit about the BIAS project. Um, so we are, as the other uh, projects here, uh, funded under Pillar 2 Cluster 4. Um, we are led by um, us at the Humanities Faculty at the Norwegian University of Science and Technology. Uh, in comparison to the other projects, we are a four-year project, so we have a little bit uh, more time, but of course we have also done quite a lot and have much more to do. Um, this is our great uh, consortium here, and I'll tell you a little bit about where they are from. Uh, so we are led by us in uh, Norway um, at the Humanities Faculty, where we have uh, disciplines such as uh, Science and Technology Studies, uh, Gender Studies, um, uh, Anthropology, um, and also Computer Scientists. Uh, then we have our colleagues at the University of uh, Iceland, which is mostly from Sociology, but also their Computer Science. Uh, from Crowd Helix in uh, Ireland and Loba in Portugal, we have communication and dissemination partners that have made this beautiful map. Uh, they are also very happy if you take pictures of the event. And yeah, as, as you know, the other projects, we need to uh, show that we are active and, and actually doing things. Um, we have the Center for uh, ELO at uh, Leiden University here in the Netherlands uh, with um, uh, Dr. Edward Foschwiller-Ronga, who is also here in uh, in the center, you can also talk to him uh, later. And we have um, uh, who are legal experts. Uh, we then have uh, Bern University of Applied Sciences in uh, Switzerland, um, which is our main uh, technical lead, and they will also be uh, uh, present in the panel right after lunch. Uh, then we have uh, Smart uh, Venice in uh, Italy, um, which are experts on co-creation, and I'll tell you a bit more about that work in particular. And we have uh, two. Uh, companies, Farplus in uh, Turkey and uh, Digitouch in Estonia. So we are, as you can see, uh, like all corners of uh, Europe in, in the project. Um, now, the mission of the BIAS project is to empower the AI and human research management uh, community by addressing and mitigating algorithmic uh, biases. And uh, I think a lot of my presentation has already been shown earlier today, so I can skip a parts of it, but uh, as was uh, brilliantly shown by the keynotes uh, also in the beginning, um, we have quite a long history of humans discriminating uh, also when, when hiring, for example, based on age, gender, race, class, etc. And there are many examples of this, of course, um, but I think it's important to keep in mind that the issues we are facing with AI also have um, quite deep um, historical social roots. Uh, these are just some examples, and I can take uh, one example from uh, Norway, where I'm from, uh, where um, studies for several decades have shown that if you have a so-called non-Norwegian sounding name, you have 25% uh, lower chances to be called in for a job interview. Uh, so there are examples of people uh, changing their last name to just be called in for, for a job. And of course, we find these issues also throughout uh, Europe. Um, also with uh, age discrimination, uh, national discrimination, um, and uh, 
Yeah. So, but we, of course, we all know this, so I won't go that much in detail. But uh, the big issue then is uh, now that we see that AI is increasingly being used for uh, recruitment, for example, on finding, screening, and assessing candidates, how can we assure that this uh, move to using AI as a tool for this does not create more uh, discriminatory practices? And uh, there are many um, uh, companies and tools that are building these sorts of systems. Here are a couple of examples. Uh, we have um, Recruit Robin, which is a Dutch AI tool that screens and searches data from platforms such as LinkedIn to find suitable candidates. Um, companies such as uh, Higher Value and also Globus AI are also um, trying to find the correct candidate for the job and also figure out who should first. Uh, for example, be uh, promoted and who should um, yeah, be uh, not continued for jobs. Um, now, the big uh, question that uh, we really wanted to solve, or at least uh, try to find some solutions for in the bias project is, uh, firstly, how can we make sure that AI does not reproduce human bias and discrimination, but also how can we ensure that AI does not invent new forms of discrimination for job applicants and workers? So, uh, in BIAS, we have uh, three core project goals. Uh, one is uh, awareness raising um, on the importance of tackling these uh, uh, BIAS issues when it comes to AI. We also focus on capacity building to equip the AI and human resource management community with uh, both tools and concepts and ways of uh, further understanding uh, how BIAS can be mitigated. And we're also laying the groundwork for um, a product from the um, uh, from the project that we are developing, that I will tell you more about. And uh, as with um, uh, many of the other projects, we are highly interdisciplinary, and that also shows in our research methodology. Uh, we just uh, finished a quite large uh, survey of workers and their perception of bias, uh, with over 5,000 respondents. Uh, we have several um, PhD candidates out doing ethnographic fieldwork with employers, employees, and AI developers from different uh, European countries. And we have also created uh, so-called national labs in each country. And if any of you are interested in this topic, you're more than welcome to join the national lab uh, where you are uh, living. Uh, and we are um, doing AI research and development with a focus on natural language uh, processing and case-based uh, reasoning, which uh, our technical lead can, of course, tell you more about uh, if you want to, to know more about that. Um, then we are also creating our proof of concept technology that has the working title Deviser. I learned from the first keynote that we should not call it that, so <laughs> a good, good reminder. Um, but um, that's why we also put it in little quote marks. So we will, of course, change the name to something more uh, suitable. Um, but the thing we want to do with this uh, tool is that uh, we want to look at uh, job applicant uh, texts and as um, as you can think, even though you, if you try to anonymize a job uh, applicant text, um, there can be a lot of uh, inferred information based on, um, for example, what your hobbies are, what your family situation is, which can tell you about your, for example, your religion or your sexual orientation, etc. that can be used to discriminate. And um, of course, uh, you have the example of uh, the Amazon company that uh, made the algorithm that decided not to, to hire women, that is quite well known. Um, but these are just some of the examples of things we know about. Um, and I think it's quite important that we uh, also take into account that more discriminations can happen based on other criteria than such as gender. Um, but I'm using it as an example here in the uh, uh, technical uh, uh, development that we're doing. Uh, so we are uh, particularly focusing on uh, the social so, uh, societal stereotypes in word embeddings, societal. Um, because we know that uh, certain word relations, they can contain certain stereotypes of society. Um, there have been a lot of studies on this, for example, how the word man is to woman as computer programmer is to homemaker, as suggested um, in the literature. And then we also see that father is to mother as doctor is to nurse, which of course contains a lot of stereotypes that should be challenged. Um, in our um, uh, technological tool that we are developing, we want to focus on um, pre-trained language models so that we can make certain that we don't have gendered discrimination in, uh, uh, in these connections. So, um, but 
our technical lead can tell you more about uh, that um, later. Uh, I wanted to focus my last minutes on the interdisciplinary understandings of uh, fairness that we are working on in, in the project. Uh, so for those of you who are familiar with the Altai framework, we can agree that AI used in the labor market needs to be trustworthy and socially responsible. Uh, but how can we make this happen in practice? Um, so the assessment list for trustworthy artificial intelligence, or Altai, uh, active from 2020, has this uh, requirement number five, um, diversity, non-discrimination, and fairness as one of the uh, requirements. And um, what we have translated that into in our project is that we really need to get everyone involved in hiring processes around the same table to discuss how can we make fair hiring uh, for everyone. Uh, so one of the activities that we have done in BIAS is to involve um, both um, HR practitioners, uh, AI developers, employers, employees, trade unions, uh, policymakers uh, to sit down and talk about what would a fair hiring process look like to you. And of course, it's um, uh, the, the spoiler is that of course we can't all agree what is fair, and I think that is an important takeaway uh, because it is not necessarily something we can program our way into the right answer. It's a great uh, social issues um, because if we look at what is really fairness. Um, there are several uh, different opinions of what is fair. It has uh, different disciplinary understandings. What is fair in a legal sense is not necessarily the same um, uh, in a computer science sense or a, a, a humanities-based approach. And also there are different social-cultural understandings of what is fairness. Just think about language. Uh, the word fairness in the English language is a bit diff different than you would find in the Norwegian language, for example. And also what is fair for the individual, for the company, for a minority group, or for society could also differ based on how you define fairness, which is why we think it's very important to uh, sit down with all the stakeholders to continue mapping how we can make uh, fair uh, decision processes. Um, but in our project, one of the things we are um, focusing on specifically is procedural fairness, so that uh, similar candidates are treated in similar ways in uh, a similar hiring uh, decision. But this is also dependent on um, individual businesses and use cases, which is why we think it's very important also to uh, involve companies and businesses to uh, pro both uh, provide the data and to go forward with what would make sense for them. Uh, so to summarize, uh, I'm back at my uh, lovely picture here of the, the company where everyone looks the same. Um, but what we can say is that hiring is often discriminatory when done by humans. Uh, a lot of uh, literature points to this. And we really need to ensure that AI does not also discriminate. Um, because AI has great potential, but can also lead to exclusion for different groups. And um, uh, as has been pointed out many times today, how AI is designed and how data is selected and trained are not neutral factors, but can lead to biased outcomes. Uh, and therefore, we need to ensure that we don't go into this uh, techno solutionism of thinking that AI can solve everything for us when it can also create a lot of new problems. Um, so I'm ending with this um, uh, lovely picture of our last consortium meeting in uh, Venice, where one of our partners um, is located. And uh, what we did here in Venice is that we brought uh, together uh, nine different uh, countries with different HR experts, AI experts. Um, uh, community stakeholders and uh, NGOs to sit down and discuss how can we uh, actually make uh, hiring less biased and we also tested out um, prototypes of our tool and I think it was a very um, nice uh, activity to see that we can all come together not necessarily to find the one correct decision but to um, as a European community figure out how do we want society to move um, yeah that's me I think. Um,